Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for blade lovers to learn about knives and hear from the makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go round. Happy New Year's. I'm Bob DeMarco coming at you. Coming up, we're going to take a look at uh, some of the new things that have come across my desk in the past uh, two weeks. We haven't been around. We're going to take a look at seven knives we're going to be giving away next week on this very show as a thank you. Uh, to everyone out there who helped this channel grow over 2022. And then, of course, we're going to take a look at some Knife Life news, some cool stuff happening there, all right here on the Knife Junkie Podcast. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. It's good to be back. Uh, my favorite comment from this past week was from Glorious Mugshots. Glorious said, uh, this was on a, a short uh, from uh, an Ozark trail knife I got, a little Tonto I picked up at Walmart during my lunch break. And he says, dude, you're going to try and pump up an Ozark trail? Consider me unsubbed forever. Well, Glorious Mugshot, a uh, couple of things. First of all, thank you for the heads up. I'll plan accordingly. And also, um, my first, your first indication that I would do something crazy like show off a $6 Ozark trail knife is actually in my name, Junkie. I'm not too proud of it, but it is the knife junkie. It's not the knife connoisseur or aficionado. Uh, yes, on this channel, you will see everything from a $600 uh, custom fixed blade to a $6 Tonto. Uh, that's actually not bad uh, from Ozark Trail and Walmart. Uh, so I am not a snob here, though I have my uh, I have my irrational uh, peccadillos, as we all do. But I, I try not to be a snob. Uh, so, yeah, check out the Ozark Trail uh, glorious mugshot. It's six dollars well spent on your lunch break. All right. I think it's time for a pocket check. Okay, today I had an old favorite on me, old meaning, um, I don't know, well, less than 10 years, uh, but pretty old. This is the Zero Tolerance 0630 design collaboration with Ernest Emerson. Looks a lot like the Tiger blade on uh, the handle that they made for the 0640, you know, 0620, uh, this sort of shape uh, that I'm not sure if it if it pops up somewhere in the... Emerson Cannon. There are a lot of Emerson knives that uh, aren't regular production knives, uh, but I love this whole package. This and the Zero uh, 620 that came before it with the Tonto blade are both excellent, excellent knives, and uh, I just haven't carried them in a while. In a while. Uh, but I, I don't know why. Well, I, I, I've moved on to other things, but it's good to remember how good this knife is. It is a solid uh, frame lock titanium on this side, with the um, with the steel lock bar insert and all that, but there's no hollowing out uh, of the scales here, so it feels nice and solid. You have a titanium uh, liner, pretty thick liner on the other side, and then I got uh, I replaced the very drab black G10 uh, with a linen micarta handle that I got aftermarket. Can't remember where at this point, but great knife. This one. Uh, actually did carpet duty. I We were redoing my wife's office at slash guest bedroom a couple of years back, and I used this to cut up the old carpet uh, as I was pulling it up, and it was awesome. It did great, and uh, that this S35VN held up uh, an edge really well against a uh, very tough material, that carpet backing. Uh, today, all it stood up to was a sandwich, so not very... Not very uh, hard duty today, but a great knife. I love this thing. I love all of the Emerson collabs with uh, with the Kai brands, especially the Zero Tolerances. Okay, next up uh, in my pocket today, I had the Jack Wolf Knives Venom Jack, one that hasn't really left um, slip joint duty since I got it um oh, almost a month ago now this is the december 2022 jack wolf knives release with that full bladed that full broad warncliffe blade very nice blade it's got a downward tilt to that uh downward angle to that straight cutting edge as you can see here 
align the spine up with that line there. Um, so that makes it a very efficient slicer and cutter, pull cutter, makes that tip very, very efficient too. Uh, dropping it low, kind of where the knuckles are, kind of on the knuckle line there. Of course, uh, all the Jack Wolf knives, they come uh, upon release in five different cover materials. Uh, and it, it, it fluctuates between uh, a number of different micartas and a couple of carbon fibers or uh, a number of special carbon fibers and one or two micartas. That's what it's looking like uh, on the January 2023 release. It looks like it's mostly carbon fiber. Uh, but just, man, just beautiful. That That's really crazy sort of carbon fiber. You know, I always used to rail against carbon fiber, but that that wasn't because I didn't think it's a great material. It's because I think it's boring to look at. Uh, but all of these new carbon fibers, this is fat carbon, all the different carbon fibers that have come out uh, uh, defying that sort of basket weave uh, regularity. I, I love them, marbled and what have you. Uh, so there's that. And I think it's beautiful. I love that slip joint knife. Uh, next in my belt, uh, or three o'clock in the waistband as usual, uh, is either going to be the Jack Wolf Knives Ruffian or the Tonto lately. Uh, these are just the most comfortable to carry. They melt into the waist. You forget that they're there. And um, so incredibly capable. Hollow ground, 154 cm. Uh, the bigger Ruffian is a little more noticeable, but it's it's my second favorite uh, carry behind this one. Uh, they just, man, they're awesome. And I have a full grip on this, though it is a short and rounded handle. Uh, perfect for in the waistband carry of a fixed blade knife because uh, you'll find when you sit down in the car or sit down at your desk at work or whatever uh, that, that the uh, handle can poke into the ribs. Uh, so if it's a shorter handle and rounded off, it's more comfortable. Um, great knives, love those things. And then for emotional support today, I had the Boker Texas toothpick. Uh, such a cool little flipper, uh, emulating the lines and spirit of the traditional slip joint Texas toothpick with a long, long, long uh, California or Turkish clip. I'm not sure which one that is. I know it's one of the two. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if those things are synonymous, to be honest. Uh, this one has Cocobolo wood, beautiful wood. Let's call them covers on this one. Um, very, very nice, uh, action on this, um, flipper. Uh, it is a very thin knife, so it's kind of hard to get a hold on, uh, a hold of, and that's where this, uh, big titanium banana comes in. This is like a, this is a clip, but it looks like the cover of that famous, um, Velvet Underground, uh, album. Um, I, I don't like the way it looks on the knife, but it's critical to holding on to the knife. Uh, when manipulating and and uh, opening it because it is so thin in all dimensions. Great knife. And uh, this is a nice cutter. I'm, I'm waiting to uh, cut steak with this. I have not used this as a steak knife, though I suspect it would be awesome with that. Uh, what is that? How long is that? Uh, three and a quarter inch VG10 blade. So that's what I had on me today. What did you have on you today? Drop it in uh, the comments below. And uh, we'll talk about it. I want to find out uh, what you're carrying. That's always good inspiration for me. Uh, I want to take this opportunity to just sort of voice how lucky I feel from this past year. Well, not just this past year, but I, I feel uh, in the end of this year, it was really start this past year. It was really starting to pick up some steam with this channel and um, with the podcast and with the videos I'm putting up. And I just want to thank anyone who's there listening right now or watching right now. Thank you so much for um, helping make last year awesome. I'm really looking forward to 2023 and um, just talking to as many interesting people and meeting as many of you as possible uh, and going to more knife shows and um, just more and awesomer. Uh, so I want to thank you all so much. I appreciate it. Next week on this show, uh, the midweek supplemental on Wednesday, we're going to do a drawing, a lucky number seven, seven knife giveaway. I'm calling it lucky number seven because, well, I'm giving away seven knives and I feel so lucky. Uh, I, I've gotten a lot of support and and so much, you know, every once in a while, a little bit of shade, but even the, even the shade seems kind of 
you know, ben benign and 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 somewhat constructive. Uh, so I, I just feel like there are a lot of great people around, and I want to thank you for being a part of of the Knife Junkie channel and the Knife Junkie podcast. So we're giving away seven knives. We're going to talk about those downstream in the show tonight. I'm going to show each one of them off. Uh, but we're going to do uh, on this show, uh, we're going to do seven random spin the wheel giveaways of these knives on uh, January the 11th, Wednesday, January the 11th, 2023. And what that means is between uh, the date, the time you're listening to this, uh, the time it is going live, uh, which will be Wednesday, the 4th of January, between Wednesday, the 4th and Wednesday, the 11th, you have to comment. You have to comment and just one. And all I need you to do is subscribe to the channel and comment. I'm in. And you only have to comment once and I will tally all the names of people who said I'm in and they will go onto each wheel uh, for um, for each knife, each random spinning wheel. The only thing is I don't want uh, anyone to win twice. So if that randomly happens, which would be kind of cool, it actually would probably make you deserve it. I still will spin again and give it away to a, another person so that we have seven people getting seven cool knives. All right, we will talk about that, uh, about those knives coming up. We will also talk about Life Knife News and take a look at the state of the collection. Uh, so thank you for joining me right here, and uh, stay tuned for the rest of the Knife Junkie podcast. If you're a knife junkie, you're always in the market for a new knife, and we've got you covered. For the latest weekly knife deals, be sure to visit thenifejunkie.com slash knives. Through our special affiliate relationships, we bring you weekly knife specials on your favorite knives. Help support the show and save money on a new knife. Shop at thenifejunkie.com slash knives. That's thenifejunkie.com slash knives. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. It's very hard to watch that little uh, liner there with all of the new knives and uh, and then not to pretend to be gobsmacked afterwards. I want them all and then just choose which ones I don't want to keep. Anyway, uh, in Knife Life News, let's talk a little bit about tops. You know, I love tops knives. Well, uh, last year, uh, they came out with a, a custom shop. I like this a lot. It's a great trend. Buck does it. Benchmade does it. Tops does it. Uh, uh, so there are other knife companies doing it too, and that is uh, making custom versions of some of their beloved models uh, for people and fans to get and collect. Well, Leo Espinoza just recently did a one-off. Uh, they do for this custom shop. They'll do small runs and they'll do one-offs, and this is one uh, that they're putting up for auction. Looks so cool. This is one of my favorite uh, tops knives, actually. The Frog Market Special. It is a Vietnam, uh, Vietnamese chef's knife inspired uh, knife designed by uh, this fella, Stephen Dick. Uh, so uh, knife I've always loved. This one here is made uh, out of 440C, which is a, a steel that they, mm, I don't think I ever remember Tops using. Uh, but a stainless steel for this is uh, pretty good, considering it's in the kitchen. And it's hand ground by Leo Espinoza himself, which is very cool. Also comes with a um, resin handle, uh, resin handle scales, which look really cool. Um, this is, well, it's a one-off and it is uh, for silent auction. So it's not something I will ever get, but it does inspire me to uh, get one of these myself uh, for my kitchen. Um, I do have a kitchen knife uh, on the way uh, from a good friend uh, of the show and of the knife world, which I'll show when it comes. And then this frog market special here, I do have to say, uh, was an inspiration for a knife I made for a close friend uh, who, whose house I was at just yesterday and uh, they cooked a gumbo and he said, it's still my sharpest knife has a nice patina. I, I very much took the design from tops. I just made the blade a lot bigger. Anyway, I love this thing. And uh, if you are a tops fanatic and you are maybe a cooking fanatic or uh, something like that, you should go check out the silent auction and get on there and uh, get your checkbook ready. Uh, looks like a really cool knife. All right. Next up, uh, speaking of cool knives, Ontario Knife Company, a uh, company I love. Um, I just recently got uh, a the Ontario SP10. 
a classic uh, Bowie, uh, but they have a number of different knife lines, uh, all pretty much based around uh, the outdoor experience. And uh, this new one they have is called the Sports Leisure Series. The Sports Leisure Series. Uh, it is G10 and plastic and uh, brightly colored. And this is their debut of Magna Cut in the um, Ontario knife and tool line. So a uh, very, very practical and a great steel, uh, no doubt for this purpose. Um, these are knives that, you know, are the kind of thing you might uh, throw in your backpack and or throw in your truck and use when you need it or use on, on those camping trips and fishing trips. Uh, but otherwise might sit around. This does not look like an EDC. Uh, so uh, great to have Magna Cut with all of its capabilities, uh, but also its corrosion resistance in case you're just throwing it in the sheath, uh, riding it hard and putting it away wet, uh, as it were. Uh, so uh, Magna Cut, exciting to see Magna Cut uh, spread so far and wide. It will be exciting to see it spread far and wide into my collection. I don't know how it is uh, that I've gone this long without somehow acquiring uh, a Magna Cut knife. I have not sought it out, frankly, but... Uh, you know, I, I need to get something. Uh, maybe it'll be one of these. Uh, Jim just put up this cool one here. It's a, uh, looks like a sort of diving knife. Uh, well, it is a diving knife. It's got a chisel tip, which looks sharp, and then a long straight edge with a short belly down towards the tip. Uh, so you get all sorts of cutting. Of course, it also has a little bit of serrations. Uh, dangerously uh, opposed to the jimping on the spine. I, I would hate to uh, lose orientation there, but um, you know, that's probably not going to happen. Uh, so very, very nice looking stuff coming out of, uh, New York and Ontario knife company. Um, okay. So coming up again here on the knife junkie podcast, we're going to look at the state of the collection, got some cool new stuff in, uh, you know, with it being Christmas and such. And then we're going to take a look at the seven lucky knives that we're going to give away in the lucky seven knife giveaway next week. Don't take dull for an answer. It's the Knife Junkie's favorite sign-off phrase, and now you can get that tagline on a variety of merchandise, like a t-shirt, sweatshirt, hoodie, long-sleeve tee, and more, even on coasters, tote bags, a coffee mug, water bottle, and stickers. Let everyone know that you're a Knife Junkie and that you don't take dull for an answer. Get yours at thenifejunkie.com slash dull and shop for all of your Knife Junkie's merchandise at the knifejunkie.com slash shop. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. So before I get into my list of the new state of the collection stuff, I, I just have to I have to show off for a minute and say that this uh this knife uh this book that Jim got me for I can't even remember now if it was my birthday or for Christmas or just because he's an awesome guy. Uh, cause I mentioned a while ago when I made a target that I wanted to get into knife throwing and the target I made was all wrong and I got discouraged. Well, recently I got a new desk here and I took the desk top, which incidentally was a countertop in many different apartments over the last 30 years, turned it upside down, felt that it was quite nice soft wood. And that became my throwing target. So I dug this book back out, uh, found where I was and refreshed myself and I've been throwing, uh, against that target. And it started with one of these, um, uh, this is the first one, the Cold Steel Sport uh, Pro Flight Sport. It's a big 14-inch 12, uh, I mean, what is it? <laughs> I sound like our fearless leader. It's a, four, I think it's 14 inches long, heavy, and it throws and, and it sticks. And I've gotten it. Like this book has helped me and it's gotten my mind right around it. So I got two more of these. And so now every time I go outside, take the trash out, let the dog out, do whatever, I go out and thump, 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 and I'm getting pretty damn good at it. Um, uh, I can tell immediately as soon as it leaves my hand whether it's going to be good or not. You know, that's, a lot of people are that way with golf or baseball or bowling. You know, you just can tell immediately. Well, that's how it is. And uh, this book is awesome. I highly recommend it from Peter Kramer, uh, Knife Throwing Like Pros, though he does throw a bit of. Um, He's he's not so enthusiastic about the no spin throwing, which I also have gotten uh, somewhat good at. I had a little head start on that uh, from a Kempo teacher in New York years ago, showed us how to do some combat no spin knife throwing within 10 feet 
a lot of that came back to me. Uh, but for learning how to throw tomahawks, which I haven't really gotten to, but for knives, uh, knives with all sorts of different uh, flip variations, this book, uh, Knife Throwing Like the Pros, is the bomb. Thank you, Jim. I appreciate it. Lifelong dream coming true. Getting good at throwing knives. All right. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the uh, knives that I've recently acquired since last we spoke. <coughs> okay, this first one uh, was inevitable, and it happened, and it actually sort of uh, draws a close to my Cold Steel Bowie, like, fanaticism. Not not my fanaticism, but for my, uh, my acquisitive uh, side with these right now. Uh, and that is the Cold Steel Wild West Bowie. Finally got one. Of course, this is their big bigger version of the western w49 uh, which i have right here i have the classic western 49 here i'll show it off with this real quick first of all really nice uh stout leather sheath uh welted uh, it's got a single welt i guess there and very very nice uh great loose fit which is great on a dangler you know this is on a dangler you don't want to have to hold it down and then pull it out so it's got a nice loose fit, uh, but it, it also has a good retaining strap there. There is the, the knife, just a gorgeous, classic Western Bowie shape. Here is the original Western W49. This is a model from 1980. You can tell from the markings and uh, some alterations to this, but you can see how much bigger the Wild West uh, Bowie from Cold Steel is. Um, so uh, this thing is 1090 steel. I, they went almost all the way to 1095. 1090 steel, I believe it is. And it's got a very high polish, super sharp, just super sharp until you get right here. Like this last half inch here is not so sharp. Um, kind of similar to the Arkansas toothpick I showed off that I got from my brother uh, in a number of other videos. Um, where it was sharpened, it, the edge started like two inches from the, the Ricasso. And both knives, this and the Frontier uh, uh, 1917 Bowie, and a number of the larger knives and probably swords from Cold Steel are made by Windless Bladecraft in India, and they do a beautiful job. And um, I, I said this last time I discussed this, there's a big difference between India and Pakistan, oh, I, I am sure in many ways, but definitely in terms of knives, if you're wondering. Uh, yes, they are close and, and their cultures are, are, are uh, maybe uh, to the uninitiated seem similar in some ways. Uh, but the knives from India, from windless cutlery are just amazing. They're really nice. Uh, and I have not had that luck with the Pakistan uh, made knives that I've had. Um, very, very sharp, as I mentioned, and um, I have not taken this out and taken it to my log and thrashed it yet or, you know, uh, done any batoning or anything with that. I, I think I might not. I, I think I might not because I think I don't want the guard to come loose. Uh, I don't know if it will, but I know it would bum me out if it did. And I don't need this for that purpose. I have my trail master and I have several other knives for batoning. So this I'm just going to leave kind of pristine. and. Uh, you know, have it as a um, home defense Bowie or no, just a just a, a desk Bowie. We'll call it a letter opener. OK, very nice sheath. I'm going to put it back in here so I don't cut myself. OK, uh, next up is another cold steel. This one, a gift from Jimmy Slash, the great and powerful Jimmy Slash. Uh, check out the podcast we have with him. Uh, uh, such a great guy. And um, I commented, I made a, a just sort of passing comment. We were talking about all the different discontinued cold steels we loved. Uh, we were both talking about the Desperado. I would love to have one of those. Uh, but I mentioned the con and how, how I had one of these and then I gave it or sold it to a friend of mine at work. Can't remember uh, if I gave it or sold it now. Uh, but always kind of wanted it back after it was discontinued and my friend gave it to his friend and I was like, ah, all right, well, I have other knives, <laughs> but I mentioned that to Jimmy Slash, and he, uh, he's, I guess he has a stack of these because he sent me two of them, uh, one for me and one for giveaway. Uh, but that's going to be given away on Thursday Night Knives. Uh, so 
that's tomorrow night. So uh, I'm not going to, this one it will not be in the list you see coming up later. Uh, this one I have already kind of dropped on the tip a little bit. The tip is, uh, I don't remember doing it, but the tip has been blunted a little bit. And I, I'm not sure why, what I did. I have, this has been on my desk or in my pocket uh, all this past week. And this past week, uh, I should say the last 10 days I was off and, uh, you know, so this was just my bum around knife. This did a lot of duty on Christmas Day, uh, that kind of thing. Great knife, and so happy to have the cold, the discontinued cold steel uh, con back in my pocket. If you're interested in this very cool knife, which by the way has a really cool way of opening, uh, it's sort of a hole, sort of a thumb stud. Uh, tune into Thursday Night Knives uh, tomorrow night and check it out. Uh, that's 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and you could win one of these. All right. Okay, uh, next up, this thing. Okay, all right, let me let me preface this. My father, awesome guy, and uh, has been into the Jack Carr books. Uh, he reads history, and then he'll read a fiction book between history books. And uh, uh, he's been into the Jack Carr terminal list and, and all the books following that. He's read them all. And he loves how, as do I, Jack Carr, the, the author, of the terminal list and, and other books with the James Reese character details out all of the cool stuff that this former Navy seal uses on his missions of revenge. He details the knives and the guns and the optics and the boots and the cool gear. He, cause, cause, uh, James, uh, I'm sorry. Um, Jack Carr is a gearhead. So uh, my father read one of the books and read about this knife. And so he, found it and bought it for me for Christmas. And it's so cool. And it is a, uh, it, it's, it's hard to get. It's limited, I guess, or maybe it's not hard to get, but it's limited and it's expensive and it's not something. So it's, it's really cool. Cause I remember looking at it when I first heard about it being like, Oh man, I, I want to get one. And I saw the price and I was like, Oh, but you know, at my dad's age, he's just like, why not? <laughs> I mean, he doesn't sound like that, but he said, why not? And he got it for me. I don't want to show it. It's the Amtac Blades Northman. And this is this is what comes in the box. Uh, you know, some other swag, too. But it comes with a pocket sheath and a trainer, an aluminum trainer, as well as the knife. Now, the pocket that this is the, the whole deal behind this. This was made by a design by a former seal and hence uh, is featured in, in some of these uh, Jack Carr books. And because uh, a lot of the gear is made is, is that way. And the whole USP behind this is a pocket fixed blade. And it's really set up for pocket carry. It's very cool. I was skeptical at first because of how low the opening of the sheath is inside the pocket. Here is, uh, you can see how this unremovable clip comes way up high loops over your pocket naturally is right here so all of this exposed blade when you're drawing it is in the pocket you know and and below the pocket line and i thought for sure it was going to slice up my pockets i'll get to that in a second it hasn't done that at all um uh, but let me show you the sheath first uh the sheath like I said, set up for pocket carry so that only about that much sticks out of the pocket of the of the handle. And then, of course, you see this part of the clip. But it's very cool in that it has a ferro rod here. So this is this can be used for striking uh, fire for for making fire. And you can use this uh, 90 degree edge on the spine to throw fire. So it's not just a tactical knife. It is kind of a, a very utilitarian thing. On the back of the sheath, this is nice, soft. It's like the soft side of hook and loop or Velcro here. But when you un-Velcro this, there's a flap here. You gently peel back that flap and gently peel back this flap. And you can keep stuff in there like it's so hard for me to get that open. Okay, so you can like keep a hundred dollar bill in there. You can keep a handcuff key in there. You can keep all sorts of little stuff in like small, a small item in there and then have that sort of just sealed up in the sheath for an emergency or whatever. And, you know, Tinder or something, I guess it wouldn't make sense to have your handcuff key in there because it'd be A, hard to extricate and B, you'd be like captive of the biggest 
Fazul's if they let you keep this knife in the first place. So, uh, but very, very, very cool knife. Let me, let me get to the knife itself. Okay. So here it is. It's the Northman. It's got a very small handle. Uh, they also make a, a Northman XL, which, which my dad uh, offered, but I, I said, I wanted the original because I knew it had a small handle and small it is. I have medium sized hands and look at this when I grip just makes it on there. And uh, that works because this, for me, uh, I have it set up so that when it's in my pocket, it's set up like this. And so when I draw it, I just sort of pinch underneath this uh, bird's beak here, draw it out of my pocket, and it's in reverse grip. If I need it for uh, some defensive purpose, there it is uh, in a hand like this. But if I want to just draw it out like this and then turn it around and use it for what I'm most likely going to use it for, opening an Amazon box containing another knife, uh, I can just do that. Um, it, in the directions, suggests uh, carrying it like this uh, with the tail going back there so that when you draw it, um, you're reaching into your pocket and kind of hooking with that and pushing off with the sheath and drawing it out but i just uh you know it's comfortable it works like this but i just like this knife so much better in reverse grip uh at least first as a default and then if you need it for a utility you turn it around and use it um but very very nice this is a, a m390 blade steel serial number 1169 uh nice jimping all kind of here uh not sitting proud at all just kind of uh gently you know, so all you got to do is sort of squeeze and you can engage it. Um, very nice grip. If you have big hands uh, and you're interested in this knife, get the uh, the XL version. It will suit you better. Uh, also coming with it is a trainer. Now, the first day I got this, uh, I carried the trainer in my uh, in this so that I could get used to it. But then uh, after about a day, I was like, okay, um, I'm not, I'm going to stop. I'm going to start carrying the real thing because I want to start, I want to respect the edge and, you know, training knives are cool. I love, I have a bunch of them and I've used them over the years. Um, but if you're just carrying it after a while, you might uh, become careless with the real thing um, and start playing quote unquote with the real thing. So I um, carried this for one day to sort of get the feel and then switched over because this knife is really sharp on the edge and on the uh, serrations, and the point is just insanely sharp. Um, incidentally, resheathing this knife is really easy. Uh, all you got to do is kind of trace down the trace down the clip. You'll you'll be looking down at your pocket, and you'll see the clip, and you just kind of line the knife up, and it goes right in. It's awesome. Uh, so, yeah, that is the Northman by Amtac Blades. All right, let me set this aside. Uh, very cool knife. Thank you, Dad. I love it. Uh, keep reading those Jack Carr books, you know, and uh, keep keep getting into that cool gear. And, uh, you know, I love it. Uh, last time I saw my dad, he's like, check out these shades. He had these really cool aluminum frame shades. He's like, yeah, the Navy SEALs wear these. I learned that from Jack Carr. I'm like, cool. Can't man, you know, more power to you. Get your kit, get your cool stuff uh, from the people who know. Okay, next up uh, is something I'm I'm just getting used to, and I love this. This is the uh, uh, Nightcore P20iX. That's a flashlight uh, my wife got me for Christmas, and um, four thousand lumens is its max, I believe. Uh, let's see, it's got three glass breaker um nubs on the crenellated crown there that bezel has so it can break glass it's very very heavy and sturdy and uh the, and it's got some really cool modes i'm uh, okay so uh in just regular mode where you just turn it on and it's got a very low light which you can barely see right now uh, so you don't blow out your eyes if you're in the dark and you just need to check something out. But it goes progressively higher uh, with five clicks. I'm going to fry out that camera. <laughs> uh, five clicks here. So you turn it on here, and then this panel down here uh, engages different 
uh, and then you can uh, you can hit the strobe there. But you can get the different power uh, outputs there. I'm still getting used to talking about flashlights, but uh, I really like this. And I'll tell you what what the uh, inspiration is. Uh, I have things to light my way. I have a number of good little flashlights that are fine for for my purposes and such. Uh, but I heard uh, this. This, by the way, is a recommendation from this old sword uh, from Dave. Uh, but I had heard a story about uh, who was it? Uh, I think it was the guy from Tactical Tavern was being chased by someone or being followed in his car by someone. And he finally confirmed it after driving around a parking lot of a of a gas station. He was followed even on that little loop. So he turned around. He had uh, a very bright flashlight with a very bright strobe and hit him with the strobe and they just drove off. Um, I've heard that in other places that a very bright flashlight is a great self-defense option because you blind people, they become very, very uh, unconfident in their attack. And uh, if they do keep coming, you can still use this to smash their nose or whatever uh, and, uh, and, and still continue to fight if blinding them doesn't do it. Um, but, you know, blind them and run seems like a great, great option. Um, you know, no one wants to go to jail or no one wants to get killed. So blind and run seems to be a great, great strategy. So I love this thing. Thank you, Bella. My, my wife got this for me. Very happy. Very excited to have this. She was kind of like a hundred and fifteen dollars for a flashlight. And I was like, oh, baby, you don't even know. That's so sweet. <laughs> Let's keep it that way. All right. Next from Dirk Pinkerton. Oh, my God. This design is just uh, uh, I can't believe I slept on it even for a month or whatever, however long I did. This is incredible. All right. This is a beyond EDC release uh, and is exclusive to Smoky. Is it Sm yeah, Smoky Mountain Knifeworks. And that is the Night Horse beyond EDC Night Horse. Designed by Dirk Pinkerton, and in this case, uh, 14C28N blade steel and G10 handle scales with a incredibly smooth action, like really smooth action on bearings, thumb stud. But as you can tell from looking at this thing, it is such it, it is a masterful and beautiful interpretation, modernized interpretation of the classic Spanish Navaja. The big, giant, gorgeous clip point folder uh, with the ratcheting lock system that replaced uh, the, the carry of swords when civilians were not allowed to carry swords anymore in Spain and settle their grievances with that uh, method. They started carrying big, big folders and they'd tuck them in their waistbands or their cummerbunds and uh, pull them out and fight with those, defend their honor with those. This looks very much with that with that dramatic dramatic spanish clip point blade uh this just has and and then the horn shaped handle just really captures uh, and modernizes the spirit of the navaja i love this thing and this one is in in 14c28 and in g10 is like 30 bucks or something 35 bucks uh, I, I can't believe how inexpensive this is uh they also have a titanium version of this, which isn't nearly as inexpensive, but one that I feel inspired to get because this design is just that good and just so beautiful. I, I kind of want a premium version of it. Uh, it is sickeningly pointy and sharp that way, extremely slicey and sharp on the edge and I, this winner, this this knife is a winner, and I've been carrying it, this 30 some odd dollar knife, like I would one of my more expensive knives, meaning usually I defer to one of my more expensive knives as my daily carry. But I've been carrying this almost every moment since I've gotten it. It's been this and the Amtac um, fighting for pocket time. So this thing is awesome. It also rides in the waistline nicely if you're going to do that if you're into that all right uh, next up a really great knife that this is a one from my brother-in-law and the cool thing about him and my brother they they have me my style dialed in uh you know as does my mother-in-law with shirts 
they understand at this point what I really go for. And uh, my brother-in-law got me this, and I've been wanting this. Uh, it's the Civivi Waxahashi, Waxahachi, a really nice, <laughs> sorry, did I, did I emphasize that enough? A really nice uh, clip point EDC fixed blade. I love this thing. I, what is this made out of? I, I believe it's 9CR blade steel. Um, and in, uh, this is Sencut. I said Civivi, I meant Sencut. Uh, but in, in we Civivi Send cut fashion, <coughs> it's ground very thin and is very, very sharp. It has a beautiful point and just a gorgeous blade shape. This reminds me a bit of the Cogent, their uh, Civivi's very first uh, frame, um, very first button lock flipper has that same contour, just a very, very, very nice looking clip point. Beautifully timed with my, with my a love of EDCing fixed blades and B love and current obsession with Bowie knives. So my brother-in-law nailed it on the button with this. Uh, he was disappointed when he saw the Jade Jade G10. I think from the picture on Amazon, it looked different. And I was like, I love Jade G10. Um, I actually might dye these handle scales and make them a deep maroon or purple. Um, but I'm going to leave them like this for a little while and just enjoy them the way they came. Great knife, this Waxahashi. Waxahachi. Highly, highly recommend this. Great sheath. Uh, pancake sheath. Not too broad. Comes with a uh, Terzuola, um, Terzuola clip. It's like the uh, tech lock minus the secondary lock. Very nice, very nice carry system. And a very nice knife. Okay, next up is a gift from Jim. This is very cool. This is an a sharpener called Angle Pro. And it is a pull-through sharpener, but it's it's totally different than a pull-through sharpener, uh, than any pull-through sharpener I've seen, which I sort of dismiss out of hand. Uh, but this thing is awesome, and I'm going to use it to bring back this uh, really great but old and very used slicer uh, of my grandmother's. Uh, my gosh, this I pulled this out of the drawer. is dirty. Someone put this dirty back in the drawer. Eden. <clears throat> uh, sorry, just calling out my daughter on uh, on the internet. I'm pretty sure I know how that happened. Anyway, in the center here, here here's your angle pro, and in the center here's the linchpin here. It it's got a, a really cool angle. Uh, measure and I love that and I am in need of that so basically it it uh, you take your blade and you set it in the guide here and you can figure out what the edge bevel angle is is it 13 degrees all the way up to is it 20 degrees and then here you have stones that you're going to pull through but look they're rounded they're round stones and they turn. Also, they're angled. You're not pulling it through two rods and just scraping off steel. These are legit uh, 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 ceramic sharpening wheels. And then on this side, you have the diamond. Uh, so sharpening and honing, basically. Um, this over here is the new edge. These are tungsten uh, blades. This is like if it's, I might actually start this knife with that. And, and, and actually scrape off blade steel to, to start it and then bring it into the sharpening. And I'll have to figure out if it's 19 to 21 degrees, 16 to 18 degrees, or 13 to 15 degrees. And I'll uh, run it through the diamonds here and then bring it over to the honing ceramics. Uh, so yeah, this, this is a pull through, but it's a pull through the different kind. Uh, that wheel, those wheels on the angle make all the difference let's see if we can get a good shot in there yeah there you go you can see it there so uh very much looking forward to uh resurrecting grandma's slicer after i wash it or after someone i know washes it uh thank you jim for this awesome sharpener um oh he, it's two gifts i'm thanking him for but one of them was a time release thank because now i can throw knives all right uh okay lastly in the state of the collection um I am 
basically filling, uh, finishing up my Cold Steel Voyager XL collection. You know, they have five blades. They have the, they have the Chris, the drop point. They have the uh, Tonto, the, um, the clip point, and the someone's yelling it at their screen right now uh I, but anyway i'm getting the, oh the the vaquero uh i so i just got this i have two more to get because i gave these away a while ago and didn't realize that i didn't want to uh so i got the voyager xl um tanto i wanted it with serrations i wanted uh that i have so i have a vaquero which has the s-shaped blade in the serrations and then this totally straight edge with the serrations i do love cold steel serrations and uh i or i just like serrations in general and uh, i think i generally tend to prefer them fully you know a full serrated blade um so i know it's it's not popular it's not a popular uh way to see it but if you like knives for their tactical uh, uh value you'll see the the use in the serrations. Also, very utilitarian, especially if you're cutting fibrous things like rope. Uh, look at how the serrations terminate at the tip. Let's see if we can get in here close. So it used to be that last little run of those five teeth was just straight edge. Um, so that last little bit would be straight edge and then it would angle up. Um, they took on this one they took it all the way to the tip and there's a little tearing tip uh this this edge this front edge terminates in a little tearing triangular tip there and then it goes right into serrations i mean you know it's it's a pretty efficient cutting and and slashing uh knife so this thing is and and puncturing due to due to that tip so very happy to have one of these back in my collection and I will be continuing um, with the clip point that is on the way. I found one um, for a uh, you know a good price. I found one for I think at Blade HQ. They've been sold out for ages, so I was shocked to find one. So I will have that portion of the cold steel. I, I'm going big cold steel lately. Um, I, I just know that's part of my my DNA, my my knife collecting DNA. All right, so now it's time to take a look at the lucky number seven giveaway knives. Now, uh, these are seven really cool knives of varying value, but all picked for their coolness. Uh, some of the, uh, these have been donated to the channel. Thank you, Dave, of This Old Sword. Uh, really great knives here. And um, I want to thank you guys and gals for tuning in and being a part of the show. It's greatly humbling and greatly appreciated. So all you have to do between now and next Wednesday, uh, what next Wednesday, January 11th, 2023, that is, is uh, type a comment in this, in the comments of this video, uh, once you've subscribed, that says, I'm in. And then you're in. I will take a tally of all the names and those names will go on the spinning wheel of destiny and on this show next week we will spin that wheel seven times and announce seven winners for these following seven knives this first one uh was really hard not to just subsume into my own collection this thing is cool might have to get one myself this is the acri 2 by miguron knives now i showed off one a while ago it wasn't this version um but it is a clean classic smooth just beautiful drop point blade very 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 nice and classic it's got a crowned spine and um this one has gold liners that don't drive me nuts i remember the when savivi first came out the praxis had gold liners i was like what are they thinking here it looks beautiful this is a this could easily be a gentleman's knife. It could also easily take care of a lot of work. You can tell it's pretty stout and sturdy, but the looks of it, man, it is luxe. Uh, so uh, I, I really like this knife. Uh, this is the DC-53 Miguron. I believe this is 14C28N, beautifully contoured 
and sculpted G10 handle scales, front flipper, nice titanium pocket clip. Very classy. Classy. Uh, so, yeah, we'll be giving this one away. I'll, I'll line these things up so we can take a look at them after the fact. Next up, this is a very unique and beautiful and seemingly useful knife uh, by Petrified Fish. This is the wing. Look at this thing closed. Just beautiful organic lines. And then you open it and it's got that wicked blade. I love that blade shape. Uh, you've got the nice swedge there. You've got the high height, uh, flat grind, but just that that blade shape is just beautiful, and it's presented at a great angle from uh, from that weird looking handle, that organic <coughs> wing like handle. You can see the uh, the milling in here that it sort of evokes wing. But uh, just a really cool knife. Now, Petrified Fish is just a weird name for a company. And then to name something by Petrified Fish, the wing, is also weird. But I don't care. If it's wrong, I don't want to be right. I just love how this feels in hand. And it just looks unique and cool. And not for nothing, this would make a great tactical knife if you needed it to. You know, or a self-defense knife if you needed it to because it's large, capable comfortable and has a great traction plan uh but on the whole this will be a conversation starting great looking uh edc and great performing edc what is the this is d2 blade steel all right that is the petrified fish wing all right next up is the max ace balance k i've had these on uh, the channel recently i love these knives um this one uh what i love about the balance k and the sandstorm k and the other k models from max ace is that they are dressed down versions of dressier uh, knives so the you can get the balance uh t maybe it is uh or the balance just the 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 the, the did up one where the handle is fully sculpted uh and the blade is fully sculpted and you have a nicer blade steel like uh M390, this is K110, which is analogous to D2. And you get the beautiful sculpted pocket clip and the and the titanium. Well, this, if you like that, is a more affordable version. And man, what a great EDC this is. Very thinly ground, uh, full height, flat grind, ground blade. This is these this reminds me a little bit of like an SE hungless or something like that, uh, just in your pocket. Uh, that sharpening choil can be used if you've got slender fingers, uh, but I'm pretty sure that's just a sharpening, sharpening choil. Really nice action and uh, a great feel in hand is the Max Ace Balance K. This next one is, uh, I, I realize it's actually more premium than the others in terms of, uh, well, in terms of a lot, in terms of materials and designer. This is uh, from Tepe Designs. This is the Tucson 381, TS381. A black wash titanium frame lock folder, beautifully done. Uh, slender, uh, slender slabs of titanium that uh, have no milling. No weight relief because they're not needed. They're slender, slender slabs. Uh, that beautifully crowned blade uh, is M390 blade steel. And it's got the Tepe, uh, Tepe Designs uh, logo there. Very sharp, thin, really thin uh, pointy blade. You've got the nice crowning in the um, choil there. So if you do put your finger... In there, it's nice and rounded and comfortable, just like the spine, which is crowned all the way down. Um, just a really cool knife. Tucson, uh, my experience with Tucson has been positive, nothing but positive. Very cool, limited, uh, limited issue knives in great materials from great designers uh, for a reasonable price. Um, this one, M390 and Titanium from Tepe Designs. That's the TS. 381 they're all numbers and so i lose track this next one is from a tucson affiliated company uh, i believe this is their civivi uh this is their down market brand their budget brand and it's six leaf 
interesting name. This is the Sixth Leaf SL02. And this thing is cool as hell. Look at that blade shape. I don't even know what you call it, but I will call it a double humped nightmare ground spear point. Double hump, nightmare ground, spear point. Now, the reason I call it nightmare grind is because if you were to grind that by hand, it would be a nightmare. And uh, if you look at it, it's got several different... Okay, so let's look at it from the spine first. It's got a pretty decently thick blade stock there. And you can see how it maintains its thickness up towards the tip. But to make it so that the tip isn't blunt, they they double bevel towards the tip. I think it looks cool as hell. And then, of course, it has its own, it has a cutting edge. Uh, but I like how it breaks from fat to, to that tertiary um, bevel there. Or I guess, no, that's the secondary bevel uh, before you get to the third and cutting edge. Uh, it's got uh, burlap micarta and uh, a nice choil up here. Great landing spot to come up and, and, and use that blade close up. It says SL02 Rattlesnake. So I guess that's the name of this one, the Rattlesnake. It's got great action. Uh, nice flipper, drop uh, drop action. Uh, and it's about, it's a little chunky in hand, I gotta say. But so stylish, so cool. Another conversation starter, deep carry pocket clip. Um, that is the TS02, or I'm sorry, the SL02 Rattlesnake. Sorry, I, sorry, I said it like that. Okay, next up, this is a uh, this has been the favorite Kubi knife. This was probably the favorite Kubi knife of 2022. Not my personal favorite. I do like it a lot, but uh, this was on everyone's list. Uh, this is the Kubi Momentum, and this one's in that really cool camo G10. Uh, great front flipper, just incredible front flipper if you're if you're a total front flipper reject uh this is the knife for you and you're interested and you want to hang out with a cool guy a cool kids get one of these because it's it's easy us old farts can do it no problem look at that uh plus it's got great action on the um with the thumb stud whether you uh, spidey flick it or use your thumb and the blade is awesome the, that, I mean, that's a great blade shape. I love the swedge, very attractive swedge, which gives you uh, better penetration at the tip, but nice and thin behind the edge. And it's kind of a continuous belly. Um, but since it uh, starts in a downward trajectory, that equals having a flat there. So that works great. This thing is awesome. This is a, uh, what's this say? Monongus design, and it's in D2. Love this thing. Uh, so smooth. I, I think Kubi is awesome. I think they make just incredible knives, especially for what they charge. Uh, very drop shutty, an awesome knife. You will love it. Okay, so last up in the lucky number seven giveaway. This is, you'll know why this is hard for me to part with. Um, but this is me making sacrifices and being a big person. All right, I'm giving away uh, <laughs> uh, in appreciation and uh, uh, this Dagger Vendetta. Look at this thing. The Dagger Vendetta. Uh, that is a big blade. Uh, let's see. Let's see. How long is this? One, two, three, four, five inches. That is a five-inch dagger-like blade. Uh, it is, of course, only sharp on the cutting edge. It does not have a double edge like a dagger. Uh, but it's beautifully ground D2. Dagger is a, is a Russian knife company. I'm not sure if these are made in Russia. But they are a Russian knife company, and they do a lot of cool stuff like this. And this is the first dagger I've ever had come through, uh, come through here. And it, it's, it's. I have mixed emotions about giving it away because it's big. It's a big folder, and I love big folders. You got your skull clip. You got your uh, uh, skull um, uh, glass breaker tip there. A small frame lock folder, and a secondary. Uh, lock there okay so that is the lineup here this is the lucky number seven giveaway so uh comment down below i'm in make sure you subscribe and put i'm in and if you are in that means your name will go on seven wheels 
and you'll have seven chances to win one of these cool, cool, cool knives. Um, a Migaron Acri, Acri uh, the Petrified Fish Wing, the Balance uh, K by Max Ace, the TS381 by Tucson, the Six Leaf SL0, uh, SL02 Rattlesnake, the Kubi Momentum, such a sweet one, and this incredible long dagger knives vendetta uh so be sure to comment down below i'm in and subscribe all right thanks for joining me uh on this supplemental i want to i want to wish you a very very happy healthy but mostly healthy and prosperous new year 2023 um think of new ways that you can uh be a great person and be a better you uh i'm gonna try and do the same thing and uh and uh, I'll see you on the other side. All right. For Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Podcast.